Captain's Log, Stardate 2020. We arrived at a desert island in the Caribbean Sea, 14 miles off the mainland coast of Belize. The sailor sustained damage from winds between 15 to 20 knots, and the sea was quite rough as the wind and the Gulf Stream fought for control of the area. We dug out a very basic sewing kit in order to address several tears. I rerouted the, the main the reefing lines instead of coming out straight. They come straight, they go through the hoop and then they got tied on the boom, on the rings that are there for it. Okay. The buttons were also prone to slipping out of their sleeves. And the slugs were starting to fail. You and the setup are going to be stitching this. Uh -huh. Okay, yep. and there's some tears. Yeah, here? Yes. You and Justine? Yes. One side, one side. Yeah. Tuck, 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 tuck. It's like rubber. Uh, would be useful if Maybe it's taped. Maybe for here is uh, for be strong. No, I think it's for wrapping something. Mm. It's like so vulcanizing. Have a palm inside there, huh? And then I pull out with the. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, you don't have to hold it up there. Okay, I got you. Robbie had attempted to make these repairs while we were underway last night in the dark. While the boat was careening down waves and bucking around in the chop. Now, in a calm spot, hidden behind the reef, we were able to take a break from the constant hand steering and make these repairs. It feels like it, yes. Okay, if yeah. the, it has holes to tie the battens in. The problem is not that. No, this is to is just to close this. The problem is that this opened. Yeah. Technically, okay. this this hole. This hole in the balance, it's, it's rotten. Designed to sew. Yeah. That's why you're tying the batten in. Yes. Then we were off again, slipping past beautiful tiny keys, each with its own little fishing shack and or restaurant. A common sight here in Belizean waters. It was painful to miss all these destinations, not to stop in at each and every one and explore. I kept on thinking, what an utter shame that this country was not open to sailboats. Look, you see? Look at that. Look at that. But cuts. Easy. The captain was keeping us all well fed, including the cat and the dog. Despite the trip taking longer than expected, now with the extra stops for rest and repairs. What do you think, bonito? Micro bonito. I don't know. Micro bonito. Okay. You put back or no? No, it's eyes gouge out. Oh. But we didn't only eat fish on board, we also had a good supply of potatoes, which I really was craving this trip, oddly. So in between eating fish and eating potato salad, as usual, Robbie was discussing fish. What is Jack? A trovali, like a fish. Color? Uh, silver color, sometimes a yellow tail. Yellow tail? Yeah. The Shiny yellow? Sometimes, yeah, depend. Oh. Yeah, you hear the echo, no? Yeah. Echoes in the sails. Hello! Hello! Another squall was overtaking us, so we closed the Genoa before anything too funky could add stress to the shredded Genoa sheet. Buy a boat, they said. Come to the tropics, they said. But in all seriousness, we were so happy to be making good nautical miles in the right direction, on a boat, in the tropics. At this rate, we would be in Guatemalan waters by tonight. 
We were not sure what would await us in Guatemala. Perhaps the borders had all been closed during the nearly week that we had been away from cell service and Wi-Fi. And would they make us stay for two more weeks aboard at anchor? We crept into the anchorage at Cabo Tres Puntas in the dark of night. This is the usual location for cruisers to wait before attempting to cross the river bar. Hi, welcome to Guatemala. We came in at night, then it's been pouring torrential rain. Now we can finally see something. Come in, Choco. Come in, come in, Choco. Even though our little doggy really wanted us to finally bring him to land, we still had to check into the country at a town called Livingston first. When we arrived, we found one other boat already here, and we decided to pull up anchor and go say hello. We found out that the captain had just made an attempt to head north to Mexico when one of his shroud chain plates snapped in two. He would be heading back into the Rio Dulce to make repairs. And we would be following closely behind so that hopefully we would not need a tow over the sandbar. What was the depth compared to last night? The Adam, same. The same? Because I wonder if, if they're waiting for a high tide or something. His phone had gotten wet. So we used our very limited phone service to call the tow boat out to start dragging SV Promise inside. We're following him in, but we're about to cut him in half. <laughs> we're gonna run. It. We're gonna ram him. We're gonna catch up and ram him. Ooh. Thank you. plan would be to literally follow right behind him as his keel would plow through the soft sand or mud and make a deep path for ours, if necessary. Weird, because it's 27 feet. So it's a 27... Is it really that long? 27 yeah. feet? Yeah, it's a 27 huh? foot long. What is that? It's a tree. We discovered that our depth sounder was not offset. When the number hits about 2.5 feet, that's when Sea Rooster touches the bottom. We never hit that mark coming through the bar. We saw about 3.4 or 3.5 feet, but never less than 3 feet. This is the moment of truth. Either you touch or you don't okay. touch. Are we going to get bogged in or we're not going to get bogged in? Either you're too fat to squeeze through or you're not. It's not about fat, it's about how no, no, no. you it are. It reminds me of there's a cave it's like a spiritual test. Ooh. If you squeeze in, then you're skinny and you're you're a, a modest person who passes the test. If you've got a really long, long keel, <laughs> you don't pass the test. <laughs> That's why you should buy a catamaran. Couldn't be a better time to go in. We had a good rain this morning. It kind of filled up the river. Or just pushed more silt. <laughs> Like New Year's countdown. Yeah. Eight. Seven. We're going above, huh? Oh! It's, cool. it's not very bad. I'm just sort of bumping, and it's not as bad as it you know, as it used to be. Yeah. For now, we haven't touched yet. We are almost there, but. I don't think we've touched yet. Ooh, this is the spot. I think you won't at all. Remember, I'm drawing six, at least six feet now. Very loaded down. Okie dokie. We're right behind you. Thank, thank you. We're moving. I'm not going to stop. If I can, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go on the side. I want to lose my momentum. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I don't know where to go. Above wind him or below wind? I think it's, below, it's getting, below, below. I think we're, um, yeah, below wind. I think we're getting some depth. It's going up. Yeah, it's going up again a little bit. We had 3.3, no? Yeah, we were at 3.3, 3.4. Now it's 3.7. 3.8. The countdown 
has not reached midnight. Woo! <laughs> I think we're making it inside. There's two spots. There's one outside and one just as you get in. Now it's going back up. About a half an hour after cracking open the celebratory bottle of wine, a small panga stuffed to the brim with customs and immigration officials putted on over and collected our documents. Later, we were instructed to make our way to the hospital for a COVID test and then we would have to go pay for the check-in process. After this process, we could then move out from this open roadstead anchorage and up into the protection of the Dulce River. Ideally, the doctor would have given us a test at our boat but we masked up instead and made our way up the tiny town's hill. The whole crew was honestly pretty worried about how painful this test was going to be. But one nostril and then the other, no problem. Se toda? Un poquito miedo menos? <laughs> we were each given a rapid antigen COVID test, meaning that the test results can technically be less accurate than, say, a PCR test. Si marca dos líneas, es positivo. Mm, okay. Aquí va lo rojo corriendo. But I think what was most reassuring was that all three of us had been away from civilization and crammed together on a boat for about a week to get here. We were not experiencing COVID symptoms. ¿Es mismo? No, este es el de tu compañero. Sí. And all three of us had congruently tested negative. Solo una línea. ¿Es bueno? Sí, es negativo. Ah, bueno. <laughs> the authorities were happy with the results anyways. Gracias. That's what happens when you stay on your boat for six months. Not, I haven't gone in Mexico in six months. Nowhere. Oh, you're good. We haven't been so bad, eh? We traveled with Kevin, the captain of SV Promise, around the town, finishing the check-in process. Here at the Servamar office, the process was simple, but also quite expensive. Seda paid a total of 300 US dollars to check herself and the boat into Guatemala. Of course, if you check online, the price is probably described as being less than half of that recently, and an even smaller portion of that cost in guidebooks from several years ago. The agent broke down the cost of us on a very formal-looking receipt. According to the receipt, the COVID tests only cost several dollars each, so we can only assume that the dramatically heightened cost of check-in overall into Guatemala is not due to that factor alone. Let's just say that we would have loved to spend more money on the struggling locals' goods and foods here in town, but we were pretty much drained of cash by the check-in costing twice as much as expected. So we enjoyed and absorbed what we could of this colorful little town at the mouth of the river. Ooh, really good papaya. <laughs> green papaya? Ah, uh, this is green papaya? Yes, for Celine. Yeah? Good recipe. Really? Green papaya, yes. These are perfect. <laughs> I get every flower. You want to see what they catch here? Yeah. And then it was time to keep on going.
man. I think it's an optical illusion. I think they're taller than. I think they're about 100 feet up. I don't think so. I think they're a couple of meters above. Wow. The wire. Electrical wire crossing. The journey into the heart of Guatemala's jungle landscape was vibrant, lively, and inviting. Robbie and I couldn't help but wonder, as we made our way upriver, how we would find our way out. This seemed like the kind of place where sailors get stuck. It sucks you in with its beauty, calm waters, and safety. The next thing you know... Well, next thing you know, you're trying to reverse your keel out of the muck because you have run aground in the river bend. It took some effort reversing and wiggling that rudder in the mud to finally detach the keel. But then we weren't sure which way to turn, port or starboard. Our Navionics app showed that we would find deeper water on the port side. But sailing vessel Promise had experience going through this place on the starboard side. We followed him, and then promptly got stuck again in less than three feet of water. A little bit of reverse and rudder wiggling, and we were free again. This time we gunned it going forward and skidded over the sandbank to freedom. The Rio Dulce, or Sweet River, flows from the Lake Isabel for a total distance of about 20 delightful nautical miles. The tall gorge portion of the river is a wildlife spotting tropical paradise. And then when the land flattens out a little bit, indigenous-style housing begins to dot either side of the river's edge. We then enter a portion of the body of water called El Golfete a smaller lake where some cruisers like to anchor to relax in a spot halfway between full civilization and the open ocean. The lake then narrows back down into a river area again, and we are in the marina section of the Rio Dulce, where Sea Rooster will come to roost for a while, but hopefully not Robbie and I, because we are already thinking about our own poor old boat abandoned back in Mexico, and how, oh how are we going to get back? I don't think I have Shaggy. Glass of Shaggy? You don't have the Loba Loba man. It wasn't me! 